Hi friends, it's Lindsay from the Vlog Books for Christian Girls, and this video is later than I anticipated it to be because I got sick and I'm still kind of recovering, and I think I still sound weird, but I don't know if y'all can tell. Hopefully not too bad. I apologize if that's the case. But what can I do? We gotta talk about these books. They're starting to release. It's 2022. Ah, and we, j we just have to start talking. I actually have 14 books to talk about on this list, and I'm very excited. I don't think I've ever had that many to talk about for January through June. But looking ahead, it might be, I have n like only two for the end of the year. But that is Thin's problem. But hey, 14, I'm very excited about that. Let's get started. Okay, first, a little disclaimer. Authors, I am terrible at pronouncing last names. So, if you'd like to correct me in the comments or in a message, I would so appreciate it for future videos. But I apologize for the meantime. Thank you. Releasing on January 1st, we have High Wire Heartbreak by Anna Smith. I'm, I'm not quite sure. It's actually a dual, peri a dual time period novel, which is not typically my thing. I'm more like, please just give me the historical or just give me the contemporary. But this one, I feel like the plot could really work in a dual period, a dual time period style. You have part of it being set in 1936 and then you have the girl trying to figure out about the grandmother she never knew from that time period, from the 1936 time period. And I don't know, it just sounds intriguing. You have a mystery writer, you have the circus. It sounds interesting. On January 4th, Life Light by Lynette Easton is releasing, and I used to, back at the beginning of this channel, I read all of her new releases, and then for some reason, her last series, I just never picked up, but this one sounds interesting. It's the first book in a new series called Extreme Measures, and the main girl in this is an EMS helicopter pilot, and she has to do an emergency landing in the middle of nowhere on a wilderness in the mountain middle of nowhere, and there just happens to be a serial killer on the loose too. So sounds like a terrible experience, but I think it'll be interesting to read about. And then I think this one is my most anticipated for this first half, because I'm so excited to finally get answers about this character. It is the third book in the Bleecker Agency Street series, and it is To Disguise the Truth by Jen Toronto. Oh my goodness. We, we know her from the prior two books, and she is very, uh... A unique character in a sense of she's young but she's wearing all black very sleuthy very surprising people with her appearance and her mannerisms and we are finally getting her story and just based off of the back cover it sounds like she's kind of just disappeared and now here comes someone from her former life coming back in to try to find her that I'm already sold like I'm ready let's January 18th, where are you? Because I am so excited for this one. And as always, all of these will be linked down below because I know I'm not very good at giving synopsises in these videos. I'm just trying to tell y'all why I'm intrigued by them, why I want to read them, give them a chance. But if you want like the actual like, what is this book about? It is linked in the description below. The Goodreads page will be linked. Okay, moving on to February. February 1st, in Search of a Prince by Tony Shiloh, maybe is how you pronounce the author's name. I've never read any of these authors' books. I've heard a lot of buzz about them. I've heard so much buzz about this book. And just the plot line of a normal girl finding out she's a princess gives me Princess Diary vibes. And I love the movies. So, I'm curious. I'm just, yeah, why not? Princess books, why not? On February 8th, a, I believe, new fantasy book releases. Look at me having a fantasy book on my list. There's actually two. Hang on, there's two. But this one releases on February 8th, and that is Oathbound by Victoria McCombs. I have actually never read any books by this author either, but I did just order one. I don't know if I'll get to it before I get to this one, but it just sounds interesting. Why? because there's pirates. And I have read a lot of, not a lot, a couple, secular mainstream YA books that had pirates in them, because I'm like, oh, I've never read a book of pirates. And the content on that was crud. I'm sorry. The content on those books were just, ugh. They were terrible. So with this one being published by Enclave, 
which is a clean slash Christian publisher. I have higher hopes for it. I hope I enjoy it. The cover is fantastic. I, I'm just like, okay, I want a good pirate story. Can I have at least one good pirate story? Because the ones I've read before were meh. So, maybe this one. I hope. Okay, on February 15th, I actually don't know too much about this book, really. Like, I skimmed the back cover a while back, added it to my list, made notes on it. But it kind of feels like one of the ones I want to just go into. Like, not knowing too much about it. Like, I don't want to read the back cover. I don't know if that makes sense. Do y'all have books like that? That you just want to randomly, like, randomly pick up? Like, I, I wanted to read this book. I don't remember why. I'm not rereading the back cover. It's just going to be a fun adventure. Does anyone else do that? Some days I, I do that, other days I do not, but it's fine. So that book is Counterfeit Love by Crystal Cadal... Cadal? Oh. Cadal? Cadal. Cadal. I'm sorry. Um, it is the start of a new series by Kregel, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be one of those multi-authored, multi-time period, nothing connecting series, which I really like those being published. Like, if you're familiar with, like, the Love Finds You series, or the My Heart Belongs series, or there's been a couple other ones releasing in recent years, but something like that. I love those series because you can pick and choose. Like, okay, this book's plot interests me. I like this time period. I like this author. You don't have to read them all, even though they're all in the series, because they're not connecting. I love series like that. I'm pretty sure this series is going to be that. Hopefully. Hopefully it is, because I'm saying it is. Hopefully it is. I think it is. But really, what got me intrigued by it was it's an undercover agent, counterfeit money, that's, that's all actually I think I need to know. It's a historical time period. Yep, that, that's good enough for me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is also the author's debut, and I try to keep up with new authors to the Christian fiction genre, so I'm gonna try it out. It looks interesting. My only book in March releases on the 1st, and that is The Letter from Briarton Park by Sarah Elad. I believe I have read all of this author's books, this year I just craved so much Regency, so I'm hoping to read quite a bit of Regency books also in the new year, and she is a very much a go-to author for Regency books. This is a book one in a new series. Her books always have a mystery involved. The romance is typically pretty light to a degree. I hope the faith content's a little higher in this new series than her last one. But yeah, it's just, they're just easy, pleasant reads, typically, so. The letter. Mm -hmm. Okay, on April 5th, I have two books releasing. One of them is a mainstream, middle grade, secular mainstream, whichever word you prefer, middle grade, and it is A Duet by Home by Karina Jan Glasser. I really, really, really have enjoyed my beagles barking, but, I have really enjoyed her series, The Vanderbleekers, which I have talked about in a couple other videos, and this is a standalone, I believe, and it just looks like it's going to talk about a lot of issues, but I really enjoy her writing style, and I just, I want to try it out. It's a standalone. Why not? Back to Christian Fiction on April 5th. The Catch by Lisa Harris releases. So this is book three in her U.S. Marshall series, and what I really like about Lisa Harris' series recently that she's been doing is they are following the same person, typically girl. So in this series, book one, she's got her main case of being a U.S. Marshal, but there's also the side case we're introduced to of her husband was murdered. And then you've got book two, and it's a new case with work, but you're still following that thread of what happened to her husband, trying to figure it out, things escalate. And now book three, which I'm pretty sure this is a trilogy, so it's the last book in the series. I'm pretty sure on that. Maybe not. Maybe it is. I'm not sure. I think it is. But I'm, we're getting answers, hopefully, on this one. I'm pretty sure this is the third book, so I'm just, I'm, I'm excited to talk about it because I, I, I really want to know what happened. And, of course, it's going to have a new mystery, but we're going to find out that one that's been going on for a while. So, yeah, excited for that one. May 3rd is a chance book as well, and I've explained this in my past videos, but a chance book for me is basically ones like, 
I'm just not sure if I'm gonna, like, I could either really like it, I could really not like it. It's gonna be a toss-up, but I'm gonna give it a chance, you know, like a chance card in Monopoly. I'm just gonna give it a chance. Actually, it's not like a chance card in Monopoly, but I'm just gonna give it a chance. And May 3rd, The Adjustment Period by Claire Campbell. This is from a brand new Christian publisher, and I don't know. It could go, I could really like it, or I could really not like it. Because it is about a girl who has all the perks of having celebrity parents. And content-wise, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's a new contemporary author. I'm going to try her out. I haven't really heard anyone talk about this book. I think I'm actually the only one currently on Goodreads that have it shelved. I don't know how I found it, but I did. And we'll see. We'll see. Also, on May 3rd, this book has me so, so intrigued, y'all. I mean, they all do, but this one... Just wait. Okay. So, When the Day Comes by Gabrielle Meyer. Gorgeous cover, wouldn't you agree? But let me just read this little bit of the back cover. Okay, ready? <sighs> Livy has been given a powerful gift to live one life in 1774 Colonial Williamsburg and the other in 1914 Gilded Age New York City. And then, on her 21st birthday, she has to choose one life and forfeit the other forever. I, yes. So, am I the only one intrigued by that? I am incredibly intrigued by that. It has fantastic potential. And also just the fact it's not like someone in a historical time period in current day. No, no. It is 1774 and... Four uh, 1914. That that's a big difference right there. So I'm very I'm very curious. I'm so curious how a Christian publisher is going to do this. How they're going to implement Christianity into this plot line. It's going to be interesting. It's just going to be interesting. It's a series, so it's not all going to be wrapped up in the first book, which is going to be hard for me. But at the same time, you want you want it to be done well. So just sounds interesting. Don't you think? Doesn't that sound interesting? May 10th, here's my other fantasy book. It is The Dragon and the Stone by Karen L. Butler. It's a fantasy middle grade book with dragons. It sounds like it's going to be like a, a young girl who has been through a lot and her, her artistic imagination is what keeps her happy and she dreams of this world and then she gets put into this world. I haven't read a good middle grade in the Christian world in a while. I've read a few in the secular market that I really enjoyed. But I am excited to try this one out because dragons. Okay, sure, why not? And then June, we have our last two. And the first one releases on the 7th. And that is When the Road Bends by Rachel Fordham. I have to be honest and say this book doesn't exactly incredibly intrigue me from the back cover of a girl who's engaged to be married and then helps another injured man and because of the time period, you know, they're like, hey, wait, y'all can't be alone together. She's engaged, all that stuff. But there's going to be apparently a story of a character I really liked from the author's previous book in it. And I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to read it. Her books, I can count on, this is her fifth release, I can just count on them being very sweet, and then the romance being just so sweet, just so, so sweetly romantic, so clean. So I'm, you know, I'm just looking forward to it. I know it's going to be another very sweet read. Okay, and then our last book is releasing on the 14th of June, and that is Veil of Winter by Melanie Dickerson. This is a book three in the Derricotte Tells series, which has not been my favorite by her thus far, but this one I think has great potential because it is a Sleeping Beauty retelling, and I love Sleeping Beauty retellings. The thing is with this one, though, is not only does our main girl fake her death, when it comes for her to be awakened with a kiss, she is not thrilled, and that sounds like she's got a bit of spunk, so I'm just, I'm looking forward to that one. Yes. Ta-da. And there we go, 14 books. I actually had a few more on my shelf on Goodreads about 2022 releases, but 
I'm really, I'm excited about these 14, I think, the most, or I don't have dates on the other ones, or whatever, or their later releases, because I am so excited about a book coming out in July, y'all. I want to talk about it so much, but I'm not going to. I'm going to wait. But I'm very excited about talking about those come June. But yes, ta-da, 14 books. Did any of these interest y'all? Did y'all know about all these? Do you not know about some of them? I would love to know. The one thing I feel like I'm really lacking is contemporary on this list, but that's okay. Maybe there will be some that come out that I just notice throughout the year, and that's okay when that happens too. As long as I enjoy it, that's okay. So yes, I'm sorry my voice is a little weird. I feel like I'm enunciating words poorly, but we got to talk about these books y'all are fixing to release, and then I will see y'all next time with my favorite books from 2021. Technically, when I'm filming this, it's still 2021, so I have a day or two to possibly read another favorite book. Will that happen? Probably not, but I like giving myself the full year to find out. So I will see y'all with that video next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I will have these linked down below for y'all to check out on Goodreads, and I hope we enjoy some of these. I hope we have a real, like, winner. Maybe a few. There's 14 books. Maybe we'll have a few really good winners that I'll be talking about this time next year in my favorite books of 2022. Maybe? That would be great. Wouldn't that be great? I love when I anticipate a book, and then I enjoy it so much. It gets put on my favorites list for the year. I love when that happens, don't y'all? But okay, I will see y'all next time. Thank you so much for watching. I would love, love, love to know if y'all have uh, not read any of the books. Well, maybe you've read some, but if there's any of these that you're just like, oh my goodness, yes, that sounds so fascinating. I would love to know which ones interest you, which ones will you be adding to your TBR? So thank y'all so much for watching. I'm Lindsay from the blog Books for Christian Girls at blogswat.com, where in 2022 there is a new review every Monday and Friday. I hope to get better at posting on Instagram more often and posting on this channel maybe every other week. And yes, I'll see y'all next time. Thank you so much for watching and have an absolute lovely rest of your day. Bye!